Hey everybody, based on your vote, today I'm gonna to go over my top five picks for the best automotive tools sold at Harbor Freight. And over the last year, I bought a lot of tools, equipment, and toolboxes from there. And that was really due to the low cost and overall good value compared to other brands. Now before I go through my picks, I would like you to pause this video, leave a comment below with your favorite tools from Harbor Freight and which ones you could definitely recommend. You might point out something that I or maybe somebody else wasn't even aware of, and we'll probably end up checking that out. Starting out with number five is the Pittsburgh Pro 25 inch comfort grip half inch breaker bar. This is about 20 bucks off the shelf, it has a lifetime warranty, and it did unbelievably well against Snap-on, Mac, and Matco in a previous video that I made specifically testing them at high torque specs and verifying those numbers on calibrated equipment. The real eye-opener was the deflection test, where we saw firsthand that side by side it performed exactly the same as the big name brands, and it comes in at over $100 less. I know that many of you went out and bought this breaker bar after that video, and overwhelmingly I've heard nothing but great feedback about it. A negative to some people when it comes to comfort grips is that you can't do things such as slip a pipe over the end for extra leverage, and you would need to go with a larger size tool for the job. Number four is the brand new bronze slim folding LED work light that I just bought last week, but I'm already using it constantly. It's very similar in size to the Astro 40SL, the Bako from Lowe's, or the HDX from Home Depot, and I previously compared those three in a full video review. However, the Braun does not have a fixed head like them, and instead has a folding head which pivots 180 degrees. That allows it to fit in much tighter spots as you're working, and on the base is an extremely strong magnet to hold it in place. The light also has a micro USB port to charge it back up, and when the light is green, it means that it's fully charged and it's gonna be ready to go. The main part of the light has a high and a low setting as well as a flashlight mode, and you'll cycle through these by pressing the button on the front, with run times ranging from two and a half hours on high to almost eight hours on low, and then almost 12 hours when you use it solely as a flashlight. It uses a standard 18650 lithium battery, which is user replaceable if it ever dies on you. You unscrew the cap on the end, you replace the battery, when you screw it back, everything's gonna work fine. In fact, the only complaint that I've really seen about these lights is the fact that people cannot turn them on or they might be working intermittently. And I think that's because the cap is not screwed on tightly. On the base of the unit, if you just crank that down and make sure it seals good, the light's gonna work perfectly. But if it's backed off some, it's not gonna turn on. So if this happens to you, just make sure that cap is tight and you shouldn't have any issues. I actually bought two of these lights. The first one was at full price, which was 30 bucks. And then a week later, I found an online coupon that made it only 20 bucks. I went back and bought a second one because comparing this to the $20 Bako or the $20 HDX, it works a lot better for me and in my opinion, is a lot better quality. Number three is the Earthquake XT half inch pneumatic impact wrench. This is the exact same impact wrench that I had in the viewer requested video last year comparing it to the Snap-on MG725. And surprisingly, they had almost identical power levels, except the Snap-on is gonna run you over $400 more. Since that video, I've heard a lot of great feedback from those of you who went out and actually bought an Earthquake XT, with the biggest negative being the fact that the out-of-the-box warranty is only 90 days. You do have the option of buying a replacement plan of either one or two years at the time of purchase, but that would be an additional expense. But when you factor in that the Earthquake XT is literally 25% of the cost of the Snap-on, and it has 100% of the power levels, for many of you it was a no-brainer. For everyday use with standard automotive repairs, even maintenance on equipment, this is more than adequate. And if you need to work on larger trucks or larger equipment, they also have a three-quarter inch Earthquake XT that has even more power. Number two is the Daytona three-ton floor jack. This is the best premium model that they currently sell, and in my opinion, it's really a pro-grade tool. I originally held off on reviewing the Daytona Jack due to a lawsuit which Snap-on filed against Harbor Freight when these first came out, and Snap-on was claiming that the Daytona was a copy of their Snap-on FJ300 floor jack, which after shipping is gonna run you about 800 bucks. The Daytona is normally only $199, and then you can find coupons for it dropping that down regularly to $179. However, Snap-on recently settled that suit, 
And Harbor Freight is able to continue selling these at that price. So although Snap One thought it was an exact copy of their FJ300, apparently the courts didn't agree. It has a three ton maximum capacity, a range of three and three quarter inches, up to 23 and an eighth inch, and it weighs just over 100 pounds. Now with this unit, I've had zero issues with it losing pressure or leaking down over time. And with this utility trailer specifically, I left the jack under load for over a week and it did not drop at all. The only other jack in that test that didn't drop was the Snap-on FJ300, but two other jacks that I was testing both leaked down and could not hold the pressure while I was out of town. Like the Snap-on, the Daytona has a three-year warranty against manufacturer defects, and if you run into a problem with it during that time frame, they will fix or replace it for you free of charge. And my number one favorite automotive tool at Harbor Freight is the US General 30-inch five-drawer tool cart. I use this one as an electrical cart to keep things such as soldering irons, crimpers, and connectors in. And all the drawers lock in place when they're shut so they don't accidentally pop open when you're moving it around. Now to physically lock those drawers, all you'll need to do is close the lid, and when you turn the key, the entire cart's gonna be locked up. Now for larger and bulkier items, they even have a storage space underneath, a small shelf on the side, and you can keep things like WD-40, brake cleaner, or other chemicals in there. It rolls around easily on large five inch casters and I have installed an optional side tray for additional workspace. My only complaint with this cart is the angle of the lid when it's open. I wish it was at a true 90 degree angle and not leaning forward slightly because I think over time this will eventually cause the gas struts to become weak and they might need to be swapped out at some point. Other than the mini stickers covering it, the only modifications that I've done was to add that side tray, which only cost me about 30 bucks, and I also added a non-slip drawer liner to the surface of the tray as well as the lid. This was just standard tray liner that you can buy at the store. I cut it to fit, sprayed the back of it with adhesive, and then stuck it to the painted surface. So far, it's been about six months, nothing has peeled up or had any problems, so that's definitely an upgrade I would recommend if you buy one of these. The cart runs about $180 normally, and in my opinion, value-wise, this is the best deal on a quality tool cart out there, period. I recently went to SEMA again in Las Vegas, which is a huge car show. They always have new tools, and seeing what else is out there, I think you'd spend somewhere in the neighborhood of 500 to 1,000 bucks to get something similar in quality from one of the other major brands. Now what I'd like to know is what do you think of my top five picks? Do you agree with them? Or do you have other tools that you like even more? Leave a comment below this video and let me and everyone else know about it. As they're researching Harbor Freight tools, your comment might really help them out. If you like this video, please click like. If you like my channel, please click subscribe. And thanks for watching.